Good morning. My name is Maureen Chung. Welcome to Devotional of 2024. This is Series 5, Part 1. Uh, the Bible passage is from 2 Kings chapter 5, verse 1 to 6, and the title is Love Your Enemy. The Bible reads, Now Naaman was commander of the army of the king of Aram. He was a great man in the sight of his master and highly regarded, because through him the Lord had given victory to Aram. He was a valiant soldier, but he had leprosy. Now bands of raiders from Aram had gone out and had taken captive a young girl from Israel, and she served Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, If only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Naaman went to his master and told him what the girl from Israel had said. By all means go, the king of Aram replied. I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So Naaman left, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten sets of clothing. The letter that he took to the king of Israel read, With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. During the time of the prophet Elisha, who served from 848 to 797 BC before Christ, the northern kingdom of Israel was weak while her neighbor Aram was strong. Aram occupied the territory of present-day Syria. The capital city of Aram was Damascus, which was about 200 km from Samaria, the capital city of Israel. We need a perspective of the distance so that we can appreciate the extensive travel Naaman made to seek healing for his skin disease, the leprosy. Now, who was Naaman? He was commander of the army of the king of Aram and was highly regarded because of his victories. But he had an incurable skin disease. Not too long ago, raiders from Aram took a young girl from Israel into captivity, and she was forced to serve as maid to Naaman's wife. What would this Israelite girl think? Let me imagine what might have gone through her mind. I'm just a teenager, not even engaged to be married. But I'm taken away from my home in full sight of my parents. They couldn't hold on to me as I was seized from their arms. I can still remember the cries of my family members, all my siblings. I miss them all. Now I'm forced to serve Israel's enemy, my enemy. Naaman is the soldier who robs us of our peace and happiness. But I must be resilient and live on. I can serve my mistress and be helpful to her. I hope that the God of Israel knows my plight and that through his prophet he will make things right. In time, she began to share the concern of her mistress about the illness of her husband, Naaman. Then she sympathetically suggested, if only my master would see the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. Verse three. As a teenager separated from her family of faith, the memory of Jehovah God and the prophet Elisha was still fresh and being refreshed now. God had not forsaken her. 
By now, she had earned the confidence of Naaman and his wife such that they acted on her recommendation. Naaman sought the approval from the king of Aram, who wrote a letter to the king of Israel. With this letter I am sending my servant Naaman to you, so that you may cure him of his leprosy. Verse 6. So Naaman brought with him expensive gifts, ten talents, which is 750 pounds or 340 kilograms of silver, 6,000 shekels, which is 150 pounds or 69 kilograms of gold, and 10 sets of clothing. This showed Naaman's sincerity in seeking healing from a prophet in Israel whom he had never met, merely recommended by the Jewish slave girl of his wife. I recall the story of Daniel, who was taken from Jerusalem by Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, in 605 BC. Daniel was forced to serve the king of Babylon as a eunuch. When Darius the Mede took over the kingdom, Daniel continued to serve as an administrator. He was dutiful and without fault. His steadfast faith in Jehovah God and uprightness in character won the respect of the kings who were the enemies of Judah. Daniel probably lived till the reign of Cyrus, king of Persia, in 500, 537 BC and saw the return of the exiles to Judah according to God's promise. Daniel an abducted young Jew, kept his faith in God while serving in a foreign court, turning enemies into sympathetic friends. Jesus taught his disciples in Matthew chapter 5, verse 44 to 45. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your Father in heaven. He causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. Jesus wants us to love our enemies and pray for our persecutors. God is the benevolent creator. As such, he has the right to judge his creation in his time. We are to leave retribution of our persecutors in God's hand, God is just. Likewise, Paul wrote in Romans chapter 12, verse 19 and 21. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge. I will repay, says the Lord. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. How do we love our enemies? How do we pray for our persecutors? In the case of the nameless Jewish slave girl in a foreign country, she mercifully suggested a way of physical healing to her master. She wished for her enemy's recovery. In the case of Daniel, the forced eunuch taken to Babylon, he dutifully served in the administrative work of the foreign empire. He wished for justice and peace in the land. Proverbs chapter 25 verse 21 teaches, If your enemy is hungry, give him food to eat. If he is thirsty, give him water to drink. This is the humanitarian rule, even at war. We don't starve the prisoners of war. Individual Christians can do no less. We wish for the physical well-being of our persecutors, not their demise. We don't gloat over the misfortune. We pray for their repentance and the possibility of reconciliation. 
We look forward to a peaceful resolution. Meanwhile, keep the faith and honor God in all our decisions. Love is not a feeling. Love in the Bible is a moral decision patterned after God's hazet in Hebrew and agape in Greek. There is much to learn in practice. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I pray for the warring nations in the world. I pray for the warring factions in my country. I pray for the warring factions in communities and churches. I pray for conflicts within families. May we honor you as the King and Lord of all. Father, you see the full picture. I know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. Therefore, even under persecution or in distress, I wait patiently for your deliverance and I eagerly long for the good that will appear. Your purpose will be fulfilled because you are our sovereign God. I pledge my love to you, O God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you for joining me. And remember, love your enemy. May God bless you all. See you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.